I just got back from some vintage shopping with Michelle. We went to Lay Stuff and Snyder's and we found some really good things. <music> things carved wood and this felt really old to me it's very intricately carved and all of this detail is done by hand which I think is just incredible it smells old it smells like a hundred hundred and fifty years old that's how I'm gonna start dating things is by how old I think they smell I did a little bit of research but I wasn't able to find out any history on this so if anybody has any ideas or pointers for what country you think that this might have been made in and what era. If you have a more efficient way of dating things other than just smelling them, please let me know in the comments below. If you are a reseller, you know that selling things that are very practical and common in a house are gonna be some of your best sellers and bookends are definitely one of those items that sells really well in my online shop. These are fun Southwestern Howling Wolf bookends. I like these because they have the wooden base, but then they also have that beautiful patinaed copper. They were $24.50 for the pair, and I felt like that was a really good, reasonable price, and I love supporting my local vintage malls. These will be up for grabs in my first Friday sale on February 2nd. love this vase. It's so thick. Look at that. It's a handmade turned wooden vase and it's kind of primitive. I just thought it was really fabulous. I like the shape on it. It almost has kind of that 1930s shape. If it was a little bit more fluted, you'd see in a lot of art deco vases. You can never go wrong with a natural wooden vase. They go with every style. I feel like I've been on an art deco kick lately. These have a very stacked art deco look to them. They're salt and pepper shakers, got the pair. These kind of remind me of the New York, New York Hotel in New York City. I've always thought that was a really cool building in New York. I've even stayed there back in my early 20s once. I think this was an awesome find. All of this metalwork is sterling silver from Tazco. It's stamped and signed on the bottom. And look at the coolest part. It comes out of the vase. Isn't that wonderful? It has a beautiful hand painted ceramic vase. And then this sterling silver, you can see it's stamped there on the bottom. And so this sterling silver work just goes right carefully over the vase. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I was really excited when I found this in the case. It kind of almost looks like stained glass, the way that they have the metal over the ceramic and the colors are so spring. So this will be coming to the online shop soon. Italian pottery. $35. It's Florentine. It's not Potosi, but it's made in Italy and it's beautiful. Isn't it great? Yeah. You know, I am not gonna pass up a good deal on a good piece of Italian pottery. This is considered unknown Florentine pottery out of Florence, Italy, and the colors on it are obviously just incredible. It's blue and green. It has that kind of traditional Batosi style markings on it, and I got it for a wonderful price. I 
loved the Celtic design on this belt buckle. It's made out of solid brass. I love a good pop of gold on an outfit. Check out these beauties. So I spotted these hanging on the wall and I had to ask the owner of Lace Stuff if she knew a little bit more about the history because they are so wonderful there. They love to learn the history of the vintage and antiques that go through their store. And she didn't know the exact history on this item, but she did know where it came from. And there was actually a barn full of antiques that was owned by a prominent family in our area. And unfortunately the roof caved in and some of the items got water damaged. Luckily the pair of these incredible antique wall sconces didn't get damaged and they are in wonderful condition considering how old they are. These would be stunning flanking a fireplace or even going up a stairwell or in a hallway. They are heavy and old and I just thought they were amazing. So I purchased the pair of them and I am going to be selling these because they are not quite right for our home. These are fantastic. They're old and I wish I knew the story behind them. I can just imagine them in some immaculate home back in the day. June, so it was made for June. W something. The back is signed sixty. And then what is does that look like Wang or W A N G W M W W Yeah, it's all like runs together. It runs it's like a symbol. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. That's what no, that don't sell. Don't sell it. Okay, that's special. Okay. That's special. okay. Yeah. Michelle think, says I can't sell it. It's I too special. It's, I think it's special. Okay, we're gonna do research on that. Well, I'm excited. We haven't even finished. We got most of the store still. I saved my favorite piece of vintage for last. Ah, I was so excited when I found this at Lay Stuff. This is a bronze sculpture and it comes with two pieces. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this originally would have been mounted onto something, maybe a wooden block, a piece of marble. And this section right here that looks kind of like a tail would have been her backside. It pretty much fits perfectly on the opening of the backside. It is artist signed from 1960. And here's what I'm thinking I want to do with it. I want to leave a gap here between the two pieces and turn it into a lamp. My thoughts are you have the block of wood, you can run your cord and have a little narrow Edison bulb light right there. Wouldn't that be incredible? I think the light would just come shooting out the sides and it would create a really cool shadow. I'm so excited to show this to Jesse and see what he thinks and see if we can make this happen. So stay tuned because I cannot wait to update you with one what I do with this and I promise I'm gonna work on this project as soon as possible. show you some amazing jewelry that I found this last week at a few antique stores and pawn shops. I'm going to start with my favorite even though I really love a lot of the things that I found but these are incredibly special. They are Vintage Tesco by Margot and these are incredible. They are solid sterling silver and hand painted enamel. These are so hard to find in a set like this. I am so excited. I'm going to be wearing these on a special trip that I have coming up and then I'm going to be listing them in my online shop. So these will be going in my shop sale in March. And I got this pair of beautiful Horace earrings. These are by Elizabeth Taylor, but they're actually pretty valuable. I think these should retail for around $200. I love Horace, obviously. He's the god of the sky and I think I might have to keep these too for a little bit. A fabulous model 
modernist necklace. This is all sterling silver and it's artist signed. It turns out that this fabulous modernist necklace is by the designer Robert Lee Morris. His pieces are really hard to find, so I am so glad that I saved this from the pawn shop to make sure that it doesn't end up getting melted. What a fabulous designer necklace. <laughs> Some amazing sterling silver rings. This is a nice sterling modernist ring. We've got a beautiful amber ring, turquoise ring, labradite ring. Look at the way that that shimmers in the light. Another sterling ring. And then look at the stone on this one. Oh, it's beautiful. So all of these beauties are gonna be coming to my first Friday sale on February 2nd. All of my sales launch on my website, leftcoastrevivals.com, and the sale launches at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Look at this beautiful bird brooch. It's got a moonstone there, and I just think this is a wonderful one. This will be coming to the sale on February 2nd, too. I love this necklace. It's handmade, and you can see that they forged some stuff together. They took this kind of Art Nouveau pendant and mixed it with this brutalist metalwork. I just think this is wonderful. And it just opens right here to pop on. Such a unique one. It's got these two chunks of amethyst. I love the contrast of mixing that Art Nouveau with 1970s Brutalist. And I also picked up this amazing necklace. It's got snakes and birds. What else has it got in there? It's got all kinds of critters in it. Oh, it's got fish on the bottom. I believe that the beads are sterling, but the pendant might not be. Somebody could have added this pendant to this necklace because I think that this is Chinese writing on here. So I'm gonna do some more research, but I thought that this was absolutely amazing and I found it at a pawn shop. And so I really just wanted to make sure that if these were silver beads, they didn't end up getting melted down because that's a lot of weight with sterling. I love to save historical jewelry like this from getting melted because that's just so devastating. After doing more research on this necklace, I actually believe that this is an old Chinese silver necklace. I paid $80 for it at the pawn shop because it was 50% off. These beads are testing as sterling, so this was an incredible find. It's definitely worth several hundred dollars. And then I just dropped the other one, so I've got to get it. But look at these earrings. These are museum earrings, and they are replicas of ancient jewelry. Some of the best jewelry designs ever in human history, in my opinion, are from a long, long time ago. And then one of my favorite finds in the last long time. It doesn't currently fit me, but that's okay because I'm going to have a local jeweler size it for me. Look at this ring. Holy guacamole. It's by the designer Michael Rogers, and I love this ring so much I can't even tell you. I think I want to get it sized for my pointer finger because that is where I like to wear chunky rings the most. This is another one of my favorite rings to wear on my pointer finger. I got this ring in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and it's all sterling. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had a really good time going through my vintage finds that I have been picking up. I would love to know what your best find this week has been. It is always so fun to see what other people in this industry get excited about. So put your top find from the past week in the comments below and let me know which of these items in today's episode is your favorite. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next episode.